In this video, we're going to cover the complete step-by-step -step installation of the Inventables upgrade kit for the X-Carve CNC. This upgrade will allow faster carving with more accuracy and also allows increased capability for carving thicker material. This kit includes larger stepper motors and larger drive belts to provide greater accuracy and increased torque. It also has Y-axis stiffener panels and taller riser end plates for the Y1 and Y2 axis, which will give the machine much more rigidity as well as raise the gantry for increased clearance for carving. Also included is an improved larger Z-axis that will add 2 inches of height as well as more rigidity and more accuracy for the machine. This is the belt and motor upgrade. This is 9 millimeter belt. It's a little thicker. I guess it's a 3 instead of a 2, but it's 9 millimeters instead of the 6. The new clips and the new idler wheels. 9 millimeter idler wheels. Uh, the clips, tension clips for the belt, washers, and the new stepper motors. Larger motor with a obviously the 9 millimeter pulley on there. This is the Z axis upgrade. beast has a same upgraded stepper motor built on direct drive to this Acme screw linear rails for movement also in here are the end plates for the y-axis um, that's going to raise the raise the whole gantry up and provide extra clearance These are the dust plates. These go along the Y rails and provide rigidity and also uh, keep dust and debris inside the workspace. And bolts, brackets. My workshop is pretty small and my X carve is tucked into the corner, so I'm going to move it out to my assembly table so I can work around it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is unplug these three motors, the Y1, the X, and the Y2. I want to pull on the wires, you only get, get the plastic clip, get it pulled out. The next step is to remove all three of those stepper motors. This is a four millimeter bolt here, and the nut on the back is eight millimeter. I think that's pretty consistent all the way around. You need to make sure to save this hardware because it's going to be reused to uh, reinstall the new motors. This motor's in here pretty pressed in pretty tight, so. Use a little, twist it a couple times to get this little shoulder loose from inside of this hole. And do the same for the other Y and then the X. So the next step is to remove all of the existing belting. There's three belts on the machine. These little cap screws at the end are going to be a three millimeter here. And that will be reused, so it needs to be saved. Same with this tensioning bolt, it'll be reused as well.
Next, we're going to replace these smooth idlers with the with the wider version for the wider belts. And so, for that, we'll use this bag with the wider idler, uh, smooth idler wheels in it, and this bag of M5 washers. This is a three millimeter bolt, and I think we can just take the nut off. Leave the bolt in place, pull the wheel off. So these idler wheels have a smooth side and then they have a recessed side. The smooth side is what goes against the that spacer there. So you can see in here there's a little washer inside of there that's moving around. Might have to Wiggle it a little bit to get it through there. Line that up. That goes on two of these M5s washers. That's it. And we just do the same thing for this idler pulley and then move over and do the, uh, the Y1 side, the two over there. Next, we're going <clears> to <throat> cut this belt into three equal pieces. Make sure that's right. <laughs> this would be something I would do is cut this wrong and then shut down the whole thing. Here we have three equal pieces of belt. All right, we're going to put these tensioner brackets on the end of the belts. Uses this bracket and a sleeve. This sleeve has a narrow side and a wide side. So narrow side first. And this goes down through the hole closest to the closest to the L. Back up. And then through that bracket. So those teeth lock into each other and then you can slide that on there. So basically this all just goes back <clears throat> exactly the way you took it apart, only using the wider pieces, the nine millimeter belt and the brackets. Find my box screws. Now I'm not going to put this tensioner on. I'm not gonna put this tensioner bolt through here because I'm gonna be doing the Z-axis upgrade as well, which replaces these end plates to raise up this Y, these two Y axes. So for now, I'm just gonna use this lock bolt here to hold it in place. And then once we get the new end plates on, we'll put that tensioner on there and tension the belts. The motors are going to go on next, so before I do that, I'm going to slide this belt underneath these new idler wheels. And just kind of pull it snug a little bit. And then I can just make a little loop in it. And 
the stepper motor can go in there. Installing the new stepper motor is just the same as the others. Line it up, just make sure this plug is oriented correctly for the, the uh, wiring harness. Back to the four millimeter Allen wrench and the eight millimeter nuts. Tighten up that belt right around the stepper motor. And then the same thing on the Y2 side. The next thing we have to try to do is remove the smooth idler wheels. And you have to get a wrench kind of. My fingers do not fit in there. So I got one off, but I know that later in the assembly, we're gonna take this entire carriage off. So I'm gonna wait and take those off right before I put the new ones on. Disconnect the Z motor, disconnect the Z homing switch, and We're going to take off the Z-probe outlet on the front. Put that back on there so it doesn't get lost. And then we're going to disconnect this drag chain bracket so we can move it out of the way. Also back here is the homing switch for the x-axis. Take it off. There we go. This blue tube on here is for an air assist. I have a laser attachment that goes on here and this is an air assist. So that's kind of an add on. Okay, in order to get this carriage off, we're gonna remove this, these bolts from the Y2 or the Y1 side. Three millimeter, it looks like. I'm just gonna loosen these. I'm taking the box that the upgrade kit came in and I'm going to put it under here to help support this. out of the way. Okay, so now we need to try to get the whole carriage off. Move it over, put this back under there to support it.
And there's this, the one idler wheel I took off earlier. Decided to wait on the next one. All right, there's that whole unit. Okay, so now with the with this carriage off, we're gonna hopefully have a better shot at these idler wheels. So need to take one more off and then replace the put the new two new ones in there. And they go in just the same way. Bolt, spacer, the new smooth idler, two M5 washers, and a nut. So just the same way as the y-axis, only a little more difficult to get to. The old one off. Two washers. Here's a suggestion that they gave in the instructions. Ooh, a piece of tape on the back side of your wrench. Put the nut in there. flip it over and try to get that other one. Okay, once that is done and those two smooth idlers are back, this can go back on to the, this carriage can go back on. Make sure I haven't twisted it. That's how it was. Okay, now I'm going to move this box. Bring that back that way. Put the box back. Move the Y1 back in position. We're going to reattach our drag chain support. I'm going to leave these disconnected um, because after this, we're going to do the Z axis upgrade. Um, and they'll all have to be disconnected anyway. And the next step is to run this uh, X belt. And that's attached on either side, just like the Ys. We'll run it through there, lift it up, make a little loop, make room for the uh, X-axis motor, and uh, get that attached. Pull that belt down on top of that pulley and just do the ends, the left and right side of the X axis, just like the Y's. Uh, then we can go around and Plug in the three stepper motors.
Next, we want to add this tensioner back in. These two screw heads kind of try to live in the same space, so it's a little tight. But uh, put a nut back on here. So make sure this one is a little bit loose, and then we can tension the belt by turning this one. Instructions say that these belts, since they're thicker and wider, that they don't stretch as much. So, cautions against uh, over tightening them. So, that's it for the upgraded belts and stepper motors. There are some changes in Gerbil that need to be made for these new motors, um, and but we'll make those after we do the Z axis. That's what's next. This beast is going on. Um, really been looking forward to this. Um, it obviously adds height to the, the, the uh, spindle and also raises both the Y axis, both the Y rails. So uh, really gives you a lot more clearance underneath the, uh, the maker slide. And so it should be a nice upgrade. This silver adapter here is for a, uh, a laser attachment, an opt laser attachment. Um, so I'll get that out of the way. If you're looking for a laser add-on for your X-Carve, this is definitely the way to go. I'll put a link in the, uh, in the description for this, uh, this laser attachment. And so these two wires, or this, this wire and this air hose are part of that. Get them out of the way. The tools you'll need for this are the same as the uh, same as doing the belt upgrade: four millimeter Allen head, a three millimeter, and an eight millimeter wrench. Uh, the first step to this upgrade is to support the gantry, so we can take off these Y um, end rails. And it turns out that five pieces of three quarter thick, three quarter inch thick wood are just about the right size to support it. So one short there. Get that supported. So next we remove the four end plates for the Y axis. So the next step is going to be to add the new riser plates for this uh, Y axis. But before we do that, we want to make sure that you pull out these dust cover stiffener hardware, the, the T-slot nuts. Some of the older machines have T-slots that are a little bit smaller than the standard. So what you want to make sure that this T-slot, this T-nut will fit into that guide right there. If it doesn't, if it won't fit through the guide this way and it will have to be slid in through the end, then the riser stiffeners will have to be put on before this plate is. So that's something you just want to check before you actually put these plates on. Make sure that T-nut will fit through that slot. So before we can add those, we need to raise this up two inches to make room for the new riser plates. Do this without this thing falling over. All right, raise it up about two inches. There's two sets of bolts for these new riser plates. The M514s go at the top into the Y axis. And the M5 by 10 are at the bottom.
Then we just work our way all the way around, loosely add those four. So I'm gonna tighten these into this wire rail. And the instructions say if you put a square against that, you should have about an eighth of an inch of overhang from your waste board right about there. So set that at about an eighth of an inch. That knows it. And go around and do that on all four sides. And once those are tightened down, we can Take out the spacers. Kind of start to get an idea of the clearance we're gonna have. Now that that's done, and before I forget, I'm going to tension these belts on the two Y axes. So these two bolt heads sort of trying to occupy the same space here. Um, this is the locking bolt and this is the tensioning bolt. And so what I did to relieve that is just put the, put the tensioning bolt in, grabbed it there and just tweaked it a little bit. Just bent it down just a little bit so that could fit in. And then when you tension this down, it'll straighten it back up. Seven more, seven more. These panels get six bolts. The little T twist nut, I'm just putting it loosely on there so it'll be able to slip through the slot in the Y rail. The top goes in this direction and then the bottom goes through the opposite direction. You'll see, see that in a second. opposite direction. Okay, so the goal is to fit these T-nuts into this channel from this side and then to fit the bottom ones into the channel from the other side. So right, the bottom ones in. I think I'm just going to tighten them slightly to hold it in. Turn these until they line up and pop in. Okay. There's that panel. This gives the y-axis some rigidity and then also keeps all your dust and debris in your workspace. So there's seven more and I'll put those in now. Okay, 
Next step is to replace the Z axis. So the first step is take this, take the router out. These screws on mine are 2.5 millimeters. And once you get those loose and just a little prime there to open that up a little bit and get the spindle out. So on the back of this Z, there's two bolts so on top, there and there. And there's two bolts on the bottom. There and there. Those come out and that removes the front of this, the spindle holder. Next, we need to take the homing switch off for the Z and move it to the new Z axis. Mine broke some time ago, so I'm going to replace it with a new one. And the next step is to remove these two bolts right here. That releases this nut here from this Acme rod and should be able to just take that right off. And then these V wheels come off. We don't need those anymore. This is gonna ride on these linear rails, which are a lot more robust, more accurate. Take these off. Should be able to grab these eccentric nuts and just turn those right out. And this is gonna bolt to the new Z axis with and five by 16 and these uh, four washers, M5 washers. So I wasn't sure how to tighten these. There's not enough room to get, get to them. So I didn't want to cut my four millimeter Allen wrench. So I found that a 532nd is about equal. It's a little snug, but it fits in, and so I just cut it off. There's a little bracket included to relocate the Z-probe outlet. So I broke that one, tightening it too much. So I'm gonna replace it. It's just a standard barrel connector, so I'll solder those wires on the back. Next, we'll put these four screws back in. <clears throat> Line those straight up and down. 
and then do the same under here. Kind of had to reach in here with a ball and turn those T-nuts. I couldn't get them to fully turn 90 degrees, so I think I got them now. Should be able to put the router the spindle back in place now. Okay, so now we have to try to get some slack out of this drag chain so the Z motor can reach here and the homing switch can reach. And that's it for the Z-axis upgrade. Now I'm just going to put the machine back on its table and reconnect everything. So it's all connected back. I um, opened up easel on just a, a blank project so we can test the travel. <coughs> You'll notice the Z travel is backwards. Also, the, the distance it travels is off. That'll help to be adjusted. Um, if you think about it, the old motor was oriented like this. And so this motor is upside down. So if we don't change the polarity of that motor, it'll turn the wrong direction. So that's what's happening. Um, we can make that change within the controller in the Gerbil settings. We're going to click on Machine, General Settings, Machine Inspector. And that's where we can make those settings changes. So we're going to type dollar sign 100 equals 26.66. And then you'll see the little OK above that. Then we're going to type dollar sign 101 equals 26.66. You'll see that says OK as well. Do dollar sign dollar sign. Look at all of our settings and make sure that they took. So you'll see here. 101 and 100 at 26.66. Okay, then for the new Z axis, we want to change three settings. And that's going to adjust the distance that it travels. And then we also need to invert the, the direction that it moves. So the first one is dollar sign 102. We're going to set that to 49.909. That says okay. Next one is dollar sign 132. We're going to set that to 152.4. That says OK. The next one's dollar three, and this is going to change the direction of the Z travel. And we're going to set that to seven. Now, if we do dollar sign, dollar sign, take a look at these and see 102, 49, 909, 132. 152.4 and 3 equals 7. That's it. Let's close this and check and make sure the distance and the direction are correct. Okay, so we'll test the Z. I have it set for 1 inch. Press up. See, I'm going to have to move my screen with the larger z-axis, but it appears to be working just fine. So after I was done making those changes in the Gerbil settings, I went in and uh, 
I went to edit my machine. I uninstalled the machine, click yes to confirm, and then reset it up. And the reason I did this is because when you set up a new machine, you choose the X-Carve, X-Controller, the rail size, and then under Z-Axis, there's an option for direct drive Z-Axis 2021 upgrade. Then I continued through, and it also has a different setting for the three GT 9mm belts. And so after I went through that and finished setting it up, it seemed to make a difference in the way the Z-axis moved. It seems to run differently. So by setting the machine up again, I had the option to add that direct drive Z-axis, also the 9mm belts. And that's it. Installing these upgrades took about four hours, I'd say, and uh, was pretty easy to do and actually kind of fun, so uh, not a bad project at all. I've loved having this X-Carve machine for the past few years, and having these increased capabilities that this upgrade provides is uh, pretty exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to putting it to use. If you'd like more info on this kit, there'll be some links down in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Please consider subscribing if you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.